Hey y'all, Zach here again, and I know it's been a while, but we're back here in 2023 with new videos, new content, all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I took a couple months off. I, I really found myself uh, falling out of love a little bit with collecting. I just found myself buying and buying and buying and uh, just really adding stuff to my collection that I wasn't really that excited about or uh, just buying for the sake of it. And I really wanted to start fresh and start new and really only buy stuff that I love truly. So, uh, with that new perspective in mind, uh, the, the videos, uh, on this channel might be a little different than what they were last year. I, I'm not just going to buy everything that I can. Um, and I'm just going to buy stuff that I'm passionate about, that I care about, that I love and curate my collection a little bit more. But, uh, today I want to go through my entire criterion, collection. There's a lot of stuff to go through. Um, I'm actually going to start uh, with my um, flash sale haul from October pickups and also uh, my November sale haul um, and go through that first and then take you through the rest of it. So uh, grab a snack, grab a drink, whatever you got to do. We're going to be here for a little bit. Uh, thanks for tuning in and let's dive in. And before we do, uh, if you could please like this video, subscribe to this channel, comment down below uh, how many criterions you have, what are your favorite releases, all that sort of stuff. Uh, let's start a conversation down below. Uh, but yeah, right now, let's get into my criterion collection. Looking at me now, yeah, see I got my life back God took control and I call that a life hack so Like I said, we're going to start with my flash sale pickups and my November uh, sale haul pickups And uh, I'm just going to put all of them together So uh, let's dive in here um, Coming in at spine number 54, we have For All Mankind on 4K uh, Ultra HD And uh, this is my favorite documentary of all time, uh, I would say and uh, this was shot mostly in 16 millimeters, so uh, they they can only do so much as far as like the resolution and the quality of, of the video. Uh, but it is truly uh, mesmerizing, and I'm a big space guy. I love space, and so uh, this was this was a great watch and a great pickup. Uh, next, uh, coming in at spine number uh, 539, uh, we have House, uh, the Japanese horror movie that is. Uh, just a blast. I watched this with my with my wife last October during horror season, and we had a ton of fun watching this. It has a a weirdly great score for like no reason, uh, but it's truly weird, wacky. Uh, it's scary for sure. Uh, but this um, is a Criterion classic. If you did not know, uh, with the with the cover art and everything like that. Uh, so this is one. If you collect Criterions, you just gotta have it. Um, and if you don't have it already, wait till the next sale. Pick it up for twenty bucks. Well worth it. Uh, coming in as find number 804 is actually a blind buy for me and a, a movie I have not yet gotten around to, which I feel a little, bad, a little bit bad about, but it's four hours long. So trying to find time for it is a little challenging, uh, but I, I plan to. Uh, and, and this is A Brighter Summer Day uh, by Edward Yen. Uh, I was either going to get Yee Yee or uh, A Brighter Summer Day in the sale, and I decided to grab A Brighter Summer Day. And I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited to watch it. Just got to find the time in my life and my day uh, to do so, but uh, very excited about this, um, and I know this is one of the best movies ever made, which is great, and excited to check it out, but this is a brighter summer day. Coming in at spine number 901, we have uh, The Philadelphia Story, a classic rom-com uh, starring Cary Grant, Katherine Hepburn, and James Stewart, which is just a stacked cast. Uh, my wife and I watched this together. We had a blast watching it. Uh, this is a great addition uh, from Criterion as well. The picture quality is phenomenal. Um, and just a great Blu-ray Blu -ray to own, Blu-ray to have, and a great Criterion release. Next, coming in at 909, is Night of the Living Dead on 4K. Uh, now, a lot has been discussed about this 4K uh, because it's not the Digipack uh, or the Digibook packaging or whatever. It's the standard gray case, which I actually like quite a bit. I'm a big, I'm a gray case stan. Um, but uh, this movie is a classic. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big zombie movie guy, so this one has a special place in my heart. Um, unfortunately, uh, no Dolby Vision, uh, which is kind of crazy, um, but it's, it's fine. Um, I've heard this doesn't look much better than the Blu-ray, uh, but I have both here, so I feel good about either, uh, on either front there. Uh, but this is, I personally, I think this is a great release um, as someone who didn't own it before, I didn't double dip for it to get it on 4K after I bought the Blu-ray. Um, and as a great case person, this this is a good pickup for me. So, 
Next up is the Best Picture winner, I believe. And this is In the Heat of the Night, starring Sidney Poitier, who unfortunately uh, passed away, uh, I think, last year um, in 2022, I guess. Uh, and uh, just an incredible performance from him. And uh, this was, as soon as this one uh, was announced, this was back when I was starting to get into Criterions, was around the spine number. Uh, I had had it on my list and uh, didn't get it until like three years later. So that, so now I have it, which is great. Uh, next up is one of my favorite movies of all time, actually now, uh, I would say. Uh, in my top 100 for sure. Coming in spine number 1127 is Mississippi Masala, starring uh, Denzel Washington. Uh, and this is one of his first movies in the Criterion Collection. Uh, but in general, uh, I just think this is a phenomenal movie, a phenomenal film about love. It's kind of a, a Romeo and Juliet kind of story uh, with these two people from two different families and cultures falling in love even though nobody wants them to. Um, and it's it's just great. It's a, a multi-ethnic, biracial uh, relationship uh, between two people. And one of the one of the people is not white, which is I think is a, is a refreshing change of pace um, and a different perspective on on what love looks like, on what culture looks like, and how those two things uh, come together. So this is a phenomenal movie, uh, five out of five for sure, and one of the very best that I've ever seen. Uh, coming in next, that's my number 1136, is actually a movie I saw in theaters, and this is uh, Drive My Car by Reisuke Hamaguchi. Uh, and this was a great theater experience, first of all. Uh, I love sitting in this theater for three hours watching uh, this movie, but, th but the movie itself is great. Um, great as well and i was very excited when criterion announced they were putting this out uh i'm a little bummed that's not a 4k release but that's fine uh I th the 2k uh digital master is totally fine uh it looks great so uh no complaints here i'm just happy to have this and happy to own it and glad it got a blu-ray release proper um and you know we're still waiting on some blu-ray releases proper from for some other best picture nominees from this year uh coda um comes to mind the best picture winner you can't really get on blu-ray unless it's out of the country so that's a little bit unfortunate so that's drive my car next up is a streamer and it's coming in it's by number 1151 and this is sound of metal i did not get this on 4k i've heard the 4k looks great and i'm sure that it does uh, but i'm very excited to own this period um, i decided to save a few bucks where i thought i could and just happy to have Sound of Metal. Uh, one of my favorite movies of 2020. I know that was a down year for movies, but this was truly a bright spot in a down year. Uh, it's just, the performances are incredible. The story goes in, in places I wasn't expecting um, and it is, is truly a moving experience. So, and the ending, the ending is unbelievable. So uh, sound, uh, sound of Metal is, is, is wonderful. And next up, uh, coming in at spine number 1155, a new favorite of mine, and this is Cure by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. A horror film, a police procedural detective story, uh, right up my alley. I watched this with my wife. I think we both loved it. Uh, I am just a huge fan of this movie and could not recommend this release enough to you. It looks uh, incredible. The, the new interviews on here uh, are, are great, too, for some new perspective. Uh, from from the director, from the actors, uh, you know, some 25 years later, uh, which is which is very cool. Uh, so this movie, Cure, uh, I think it's just uh, phenomenal, um, and I, I hope that you you seek this out. Um, again, bummed it's not a 4K, but it looks great, so I can't complain too much. And finally, um, I actually got this for Christmas, so I don't know if this counts. Uh, my wife got this for me. Came out in November, one of the big releases. Um, and this is Malcolm X, but it's actually signed by Spike Lee himself. So uh, very proud to have this in, in my collection. Um, I haven't been able to dig through all this yet. You know, we've been traveling uh, with, with family and, and whatnot. And so uh, it's made, made this a little bit hard to dig into, uh, to have the time to dig into this uh, properly. Uh, but just super honored uh, to have this signed by uh, Spike Lee himself and it just means a lot and uh it's probably my favorite thing i own now so that's very cool um but it's 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 the only uh kind of digi pack uh of the year really that i've gotten from criterion i know they have only done a couple but slight unboxing here got the discs inside with the booklet and everything uh, i'm glad that this got a huge release and they and they treated it um 
you know, with, with the respect that it deserves uh, being one of the best biopics ever made. So, um, that's my haul uh, for from the flash sale um, and, and from November. I did not get Wall-E. I'm still really on the fence about Wall-E just with it being a Pixar or Disney movie. It's always going to be on Disney Plus. I don't know. Uh, just got mixed feelings about it, but I'll probably pick it up uh, at some point. Uh, and I, I love Pixar and love the, the people there and uh, the work that they do. So um, I'll probably grab it at some point. But um, this is the haul from November from October and November. Now let's get into the rest of it. All right, now getting into the rest of the collection, I've got a lot to go through here. Uh, so we're gonna go by spine number here, and at spine number 13, uh, we have The Silence of the Lambs. Uh, I know this got a 4K release from Kino Lorber, I believe, uh, but I love, 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 love this packaging. Oh, it's so great. Um, I might just unbox all these, these Digipack. It has a thick booklet the discs here and uh, just one of the greatest movies ever made period uh, another one that's kind of up my alley um, police procedural detective mystery serial killer movie uh, just one of the best uh, coming in next at spy number 24 is uh, Akira Kurosawa's high and low now I have tried to watch this twice I have not made it all the way through I know, I know, I'm very sorry. I will finish it. It hasn't been because it wasn't riveting or anything else like that. It's just a time thing. You know, this movie's two and a half hours long. Um, and it's just uh, hard to get through a movie like that long and, and have the time for it. So um, I, I love Akira Kurosawa's work, The Seven Samurai, Throne of Blood, um, Yojimbo, Sanjuro, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I uh, haven't gotten all the way through this yet. Coming in next is by number 56 is The 30. Nine Steps, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Now, my wife and I are big uh, Alfred Hitchcock fans. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but we actually have um, the Classics collections on 4K back here, and we've been going through those over the last year, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, but this is a great Criterion release as well. This movie is funnier than you'd expect it to be. Um, it, it has, um, uh, you know, it's, it's very fun in general to watch, uh, a movie from 1935. Uh, just flies by and, and kind of zips by at, at a nice pace um, and wouldn't expect anything less from Hitchcock, right? Uh, but this is the 39 Steps, um, one of my favorite Criterion releases and one of my favorite Criterion um, covers as well. I'm a big fan of, of, this, of this artwork on the front. Coming in next, it's by number 57 is Charade. Now, basically in every sale, um, I pick up uh, a movie for my wife and I to enjoy. Um, most of the time I'm buying for myself things that I'll enjoy, but I always get one that I want to watch with her and I think that she'll enjoy. And Charade was the July pickup and the uh, the Philadelphia Story was uh, the November pickup for that. So, uh, But this is a great movie. One of my favorites uh, of all time. Very, very funny. Uh, the performances in this, Cary Grant, Audrey Hepburn, Audrey Hepburn are just wonderful, phenomenal, uh, and just a, just a blast watching this movie um, as you're trying to figure out kind of what's going on, who's behind it all. Uh, it's it's great. Um, this is a pretty light Criterion release, though, I will say, uh, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, there's not a ton of special features on here. I probably could have gotten the regular Blu-ray for 10 bucks and been fine, but um, I'm happy to own it this way as well. So. Uh, coming in next, it's by number 70 is The Last Temptation of Christ. A uh, controversial take um, as, a, as a Christian, um, you know, I work at a church in my day job, um, I, I do think this is the best movie about Jesus ever made, and uh, I think Martin Scorsese's take here is a fascinating one. Um, the movie tells you up front that it's fictional, um, and so I think that should kind of uh, ease the tempers a little bit uh, when, when talking about this movie. Um, Martin Scorsese and Paul Schrader are not trying to tell you that this is exactly how it happened. Um, I think it's more uh, uh, two Catholic filmmakers trying to uh, work out their relationship with Jesus on screen. Um, and I think in, in that realm, it's utterly fascinating and captivating. So I uh, would totally recommend this. I had to write a paper on it. I got an A plus on that paper. Uh, if you ever like to read it, let me know. I'll send it to you. Uh, but yeah, that's The Last Temptation of Christ. Uh, coming next is by number uh, 97 is Do the Right Thing. I believe this is one of my only um, criterions I kept the sticker on. Uh, so I guess it's kind of signed by Spike Lee. Uh, not like my Malcolm X one, 
Uh, but this was the second Criterion I ever bought. We'll talk about um, the first one in a little bit. Uh, but again, this release is just one of Criterion's best. I know there's a 4K out now from Universal, I believe. Uh, but this, it doesn't get much better than this release. And the movie looks incredible uh, here. Uh, the color timing, I think, is just uh, is just pitch perfect. How it should be watched. Uh, the reds, the heat of it all. Uh, it just looks great. So this is Do the Right Thing from Spike Lee. Uh, probably his best film. Uh, and this is just a stacked edition. I've read through his director's journal in here three or four times. Um, and then it's just a packed release and for $20 is well worth it. So let's do the right thing. Uh, next up is a documentary and this is file number 289 and this is Hoop Dreams. I'm a big basketball fan um, in my other spare time. Uh, I cover um, Illinois basketball and Illinois football and Illinois uh, University Athletics and uh, and also a big Bulls fan. Uh, and so Hoop Dreams uh, follows two high school basketball players as they're coming up in Chicago and uh this this movie um is just great it's a it's nearly three hours long it took me a couple of sittings to get through it um but uh, this is just a a wonderful documentary that's incredibly well put together and uh, you do get invested in the story of these two kids so i can't recommend hoop dreams enough one of the best documentaries uh, ever made especially sports documentaries uh, next up is the first Wes Anderson movie I have in the collection. It's by number 300, Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. This might be my favorite Wes Anderson movie. It depends on the day uh, that you ask me about it. But, uh, you know, I, I, I like this movie a lot. Uh, Wes Anderson's not my favorite filmmaker, but I do like all of his movies. Uh, but The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou is at least top two. Sometimes it's one. I also own what would be number one if it's not this. Um, and yes, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou is, is just tremendous and funny and memorable. And yeah, big fan. And then we have at spine number 408 is Breathless. French New Wave. I had to get into it. Um, a John Luke Goddard uh, movie. Another wonderful digi pack with a thick booklet and the discs like so, the disc like so, and uh, yeah, this is great. I know uh, some people are a little sour on John Luke Goddard, or maybe don't like all of his movies, but I think this one is really well made, and uh, really well done. If I can get the movie back in here. Wow, this is not getting edited any differently, by the way. This is unbelievable. Why is this not going in? There we go. That's not getting edited. Breathless by John Luke Goddard. Next up is a movie I consider to be one of the 10 greatest movies ever made, for real. Um, this is spy number 562. This is Brad De Palma's Blowout. Now, I just had the regular version. I got this a couple years ago, I think, um, and thought the picture looked great, and I didn't feel the need to upgrade to 4K when that came out. So um, I, I do think, uh, like I said, this is one of the 10 best movies ever made i know the first few minutes can kind of put a, p a few people off and i understand that for sure but get past that get into the story and the, and the mystery and uh the conspiracy of it all and i think you'll find that um that this is just uh just it'll blow you away uh hence the title blow up so that's blow out uh, by brian de palma Next up is another Criterion classic, one you have to have in your collection. That's fine number 591. This is 12, Angry Men, one of the best Criterion releases of all time with one of the best covers, with some of the best supplements, uh, with an outstanding uh, presentation. Kind of open it up here. You get a booklet that I've read, I think, three times. Uh, yeah, this is uh, just simply unbelievable stuff from Criterion. So. It's one you have to have uh, in your, if you're just starting a collection, that's definitely one that you wanna start your collection with. Um, it's a good title, good title to have. Uh, next up is a movie by David Fincher, and this is spine number 627, and this is The Game, with a really cool cover that's hard to see because it's mostly black, uh, but very cool cover, very good movie. Um, it's not my favorite Fincher by any means, uh, but it is, it is uh, a fun movie that has a, a pretty, uh, as you're trying to figure it out, it has some pretty fun revelations uh, as, as you go. So 
Uh, that's the game. Right, coming in next, it's my number uh, 681 is uh, Francis Ha, directed by Noah Baumbach, uh, starring Greta Gerwig. Uh, they're married, which is cool. I'm a big fan of Marriage Story, uh, which we'll probably get to in, in a little bit. Um, and my wife's also a big fan of Greta Gerwig. Uh, she directed Little Women, which was one of my wife's favorite movies. Uh, she also directed Lady Bird, which I think is one of the best coming of age stories in the last, I don't know, 10 years or so. Um, and so Francis Ha, a movie about being in your mid-20s. And it's kind of weird to watch this now because when I first watched this movie, I very much uh, related uh, to the main character here. Um, you know, trying to figure out what my place is in the world. What, I'm, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, but now that I've kind of, you know, honed in on what I feel like is my calling and uh, the gifts and talents that I've been given, I don't relate to this as much, but uh, I still think this is a, a very good movie. Next up is a movie I bought because I was scared it was going to go out of print. This is spy number 691, and it is Thief, directed by Michael Mann, starring the late James Caan. Uh, yeah, so this was an MGM, uh, this is an MGM title, and when Amazon bought MGM, I was really freaked out that this was going to go out of print, so I basically, I think it was, was July 2021, um, I decided to uh, go ahead and pick this up because I wasn't sure how much longer this was going to be around, and just really wanted to uh, to own this in the collection, and it was just really scared. So I think you can still get it for sure. Uh, so go pick it up if you don't have it already. But this is just a great movie. Michael Mann um, is is the guy, uh, one of my favorite uh, filmmakers. Uh, Collateral, Heat, uh, just a lot of good movies. And Thief uh, is, is right up there as well. All right, my other Wes Anderson movie, and, and the one that would be in the running for my favorite, if it's not Life Aquatic. Is a fantastic Mr. Fox. I don't have the double pack. It's just the Blu-ray. Um, but once again, I'll unbox this a little bit for you. It comes in a in a decently thick booklet. It's not like a bound book like some of them are. But um, and then you've got the disc on the inside there. Uh, and just simply uh, one of Wes Anderson's best. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, I think it's Wes Anderson's funniest movie. You know, all of his movies are very funny. I, I do think it's his funniest. And, uh, yeah, fantastic, Mr. Fox. Uh, next up, as a big Beatles fan, I had to get this one and another one in the collection. Um, this is by number 711, and this is a hard day's night. Just the Blu-ray, not the 4K. I uh, didn't feel like I needed it for this one because um, it already has a 4K digital restoration. So this felt like an easy one that I didn't have to upgrade. But another digi did you pack and just the thickest booklet uh, you've ever seen i have a disc loose in here which isn't great it's the dvd though it's okay um yeah thick thick booklet uh and one that i've poured over countless times and then you've got the blu-ray right here and the two dvds so uh, this is a great combo pack for 20 bucks i would recommend it if you can still find it uh, but the 4K, I'm sure, is great, too. So, But happy to own this as a huge Beatles fan. And uh, Criterion did this one justice, for sure. And one of the few box sets in the collection. Uh, I was going to give this its own little segment in the video, but I don't really have enough to do that. So um, this is spy number 729, and this is the complete jock to T. This was my big... Uh, Prize of the July haul. I've been wanting this for a year plus and have been saving up for it. Um, I watched uh, a, a few of these films um, in, a, in a film class I took in college and just found them to be hilarious and charming and uh, wanted all of his movies to go through. So each of these movies uh, individually are pretty great and they're pretty great presentations by Criterion. And there is so much uh, extra bonus material on each of on each of these movies, which is great. Uh, they basically got their own releases, which is awesome. So uh, this is the complete Jack to T. And uh, I saw that they just released the essential Jack to me, which I'm hoping to pick up uh, maybe in March or something like that, because uh, Jack to me, one of my favorite filmmakers uh, of all time, is not represented in my collection, which is a little sad. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to, to have the, com the complete Jack the T in my collection as well. All right, as we keep chugging along here, we come to spine number 794, Inside Lewin Davis, uh, the Coen brothers. Uh, they're kind of 
Uh, their movie set in the 60s folk music scene, which is very cool. Very good movie. At spine number 821, we have Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. I know this has a 4K out, um, and I think it came in the Columbia Classics collection. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a hilarious movie by Stanley Kubrick. A different kind of movie for him, uh, which is which is cool to see. We don't often get the, the comedic side. I know Barry Lyndon's very funny too, but uh, Dr. Strange Love. Another Coen Bros movie, actually, I believe their debut, uh, Blood Simple, a uh, super, um, super fun uh, kind of uh, noir kind of movie, um, and just great performances in here all around. Coming in at spy number 838 is Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth. This is the only del Toro film in the collection that I own. I don't have Kronos or The Devil's Backbone, but happy to own this one. And uh, my wife and I watched this together and, and had a blast uh, watching it. Uh, it's kind of like a horror movie for kids in a way, but there's, it, but it's definitely a horror movie. So very interesting. Uh, next is a movie my wife did not like, but I really do. And this is spine number 843. This is Paul Thomas Anderson's Punch Drunk Love. Some people call this a romantic comedy. Uh, if that's the case, this is the most stressful romantic comedy I've ever seen in my life. It's the, or well, I'm Sanders in this too, but uh, it's the uncut gems of romantic comedies. Very stressful, um, and uh, it's it's not as uh, romantic in the same vein as romantic comedies that you'd think of, like When Harry Met Sally or You Got Mail, stuff like that. Uh, one of my only other box sets that I've got uh, here is the Before Trilogy. It still has the sticker on it, one of my first Criterions, and... Uh, yeah, my wife, who was my girlfriend then, got this for me as a gift, uh, maybe for my graduation or something, or our one-year anniversary. I can't remember what when she got this for me, but uh, each of these editions is great. We've watched this together. I think I like these more than she does, but I think um, Sunrise and Sunset are perfect movies, and Midnight is great, but not perfect. So that's my take on the Before Trilogy. Next up is another Kubrick movie. Uh, this is Barry Lyndon at spine number 897. Um, a hilarious movie that does not get the credit it often deserves for its humor. Uh, this is uh, just, it's very funny. Our main character is kind of a doofus, and, uh, it, but a, a three hour kind of historical epic, I guess. Um, but I don't think it feels that epic, but uh, one of Kubrick's, uh, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't say oddest movies, but uh, it's not, for a lot of people, what immediately comes to mind when I think of Kubrick. Usually it's 2001 and The Shining and all that sort of stuff. But this, ah, uh, this belongs, this belongs right up there. It's, it's, it's truly great. And next up, one of the most fun releases in the Criterion Collection is The Princess Bride. That's fine number 948. It comes in a book. I think that's very cool. It comes like a book. Like a storybook, like a fairy tale. And that's just awesome. Uh, wife and I watched this together. It's great. Um, next up is the other Beatles-related movie I was pointing to, and this is Robert Zemeckis' debut feature. Sorry that you can kind of see the movies in the corner there, but um, this is I Want to Hold Your Hand. It follows a group of teenagers as they try to get into the Ed Sullivan show to see the Beatles perform, um, and this is just a riot. It's so fun. It's so funny. Um, and the recreation of the, the Beatles' performance um, at the Ed Sullivan Show is tremendous. And in my opinion, this has one of the greatest supplements the Criterion has ever done uh, in a conversation with Zemeckis uh, and Spielberg and, and Bob Gale as well. Um, and they have just have a conversation about how this movie got financed, uh, how Sp Spielberg pulled some strings together uh, to get this off the ground, uh, and just, just fascinating behind-the-scenes stories of how this movie came together. So... Uh, I would buy this just for that supplement alone, just to see that conversation. Uh, but the movie itself is also just truly delightful. And my final box set, I believe, uh, and it's just a two-pack. Uh, I have Police Story 1 and 2. The very first criterion I ever purchased right here, uh, Police Story 1 and 2. The first Police Story is one of my favorite movies ever made. I've seen it up to maybe 10 times now. Uh, I like the second one, but, but not as much. Uh, but this has, it's just uh, a very cool release. And I had the poster that came in here in my dorm room for a little while. Uh, and this is just uh, a spectacular action 
movie making and the stuff that he does in here and the positions that he puts himself in to potentially hurt himself. <laughs> uh, it's so fun to watch. Um, and I, I would highly recommend this, even though I know Eureka just put out um, the three film, Play Story 1, 2, and 3. I wish this had three, but I know three wasn't directed by Jackie Chan um, on 4K. So there's that box set out there. You have to import that from the UK, I believe. But uh, this set from Criterion, if you're here in the US, you don't want to import it, uh, will do you just fine. The movies look great. And uh, another movie about nuclear bombs coming in at spine number uh, 1011, uh, 1011, is Failsafe, directed by Sidney Lamette, who also uh, did 12 Angry Men. Uh, this is uh, a great movie to watch uh, with a double feature with, like, Dr. Strangelove. Um, and it's also going to be on my watch list as I prep for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, which comes out uh, this summer. So putting a list together for that. Uh, movies have been made about uh, nuclear weapons. Um, this is kind of the serious, more stressful side to C Kubrick's uh, satirical and, and comedic side to it. So, failsafe, uh, spine number 1011. It's great. We are coming down towards the end of it here now. And uh, it's spine number 1038. Uh, we have Marriage Story, directed by Noah Baumbach. Uh, comes in this awesome digi, uh, digi book. And also um, in it, so I think this is very cool. Um, it has the letters uh, that Charlie and Nicole wrote to each other, uh, and also a booklet with an essay, per usual, with Criterion. So it's just a very cool set uh, for a very good movie, and that, that's just great. So Marriage Story, spy number 1038. You're going to watch me struggle to get this back into the packaging. There we go. Marriage Story, not getting edited out. <clears throat> okay. Next up, that's spine number 1035, we have Come and See, one of the most harrowing uh, war movies ever uh, put to film, uh, which, is, uh, which is crazy. Uh, it's, it's one that's, that's very hard to watch, um, that uh, will make you think things about war that maybe you've never thought before. It'll change how you think about war and all that happens, um, and just the, the humanity, the brutality of it all. So Come and See. Uh, one of Criterion's most iconic releases of 1035. And then coming in at spot number 1054, another early Criterion for me is it has the director approved sticker on it. Uh, 1054, like I said, this is Parasite. Um, I'm a big Bon Joon-ho fan and this um, Criterion putting his work out kind of got me even more into Criterion. Uh, I was more intrigued by what Criterion was doing and uh, Parasite, uh, this is a, a great... Um, a great edition uh, with the black and white movie, uh, a black and white edition. I've poured through all the special features here. They're great. Uh, the movie is obviously just remarkable. Watch this with my, I've seen this probably four or five times now at this point. I've just watched it with a bunch of different people and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> uh, coming in at spot number 1058 is a streamer, uh, like Marriage Story, like Sound of Metal. Um, this is The Irishman by Martin Scorsese. So glad this got a release. Um, this nearly, uh, this three and a half hour uh, long movie um, got got a great treatment here uh, from Criterion. And this is, uh, I would say, um, as far as like bang for your buck goes, this is, this is a big one. Uh, this is a good one for that. Um, you know, obviously three and a half hour long movie. All the supplements that come along here um, and the presentation of the movie, all that for 20 bucks. Great release. Uh, next up is a documentary, and I think the spine work. Nope, we're still good. Um, at spine number 1061 is Minding the Gap. Great documentary uh, by Bing Liu, who was very young when he put this movie out. And this just tracks uh, these three people, these three friends across their lives, how they grow up together, skateboarding, all sorts of stuff. Um, and it's, uh, it's a great little watch. It's only 90 minutes. Uh, you can watch it on Hulu, I believe. Um, but uh, this is totally worth owning, too. Next up uh, at 1064 is the Parallax View, directed by uh, Alan J. Pacula, or Peculia. I don't know how people say it, but um, this is a great kind of like paranoia thriller. Thriller. It's one of uh, the three movies in his paranoia uh, kind of trilogy. Uh, so this is an American conspiracy assassination attempt kind of stuff, uh, and it's 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 a great watch. Next up is another Bong Joon Ho movie. It's spy number 1073. This is Memories. Of, of murder. I don't think it's better than Parasite, but it's very close. 
this is a police procedural detective story that heavily, heavily inspired David Fincher's Zodiac um, and, and the way that he approached that story. And he's admitted that before in the past too. Uh, but this is, if you're into that kind of thing, you like this a lot. Next up at spot number 1091 is Beasts of No Nation, another Netflix movie. Um, I know that uh, Kerry Joji Fukunaga is uh, under a lot of controversy right now, and uh, we now know he's not the best human being, but uh, this movie uh, is very good, and I bought it because they shot a lot of it um, in Ghana, Africa, and I've actually been to Ghana, and I've seen um, the southern part of the country, the northern part of the country, um, and so wanted uh, to own a movie in the Criterion Collection filmed um, in Ghana. So, uh, I was very excited about that. Next up is another streamer on Amazon Prime, I believe. Some, it's fine number 1106. This is One Night in Miami, uh, Regina King's uh, directorial debut with four just electric performances uh, by all of the leads in this movie. Um, it feels sort of like a play, and that's because kind of it is Kent Powers uh, wrote, the, wrote the screenplay here. Um, and I believe this was a play first maybe, but the, the behind the scenes special features on this are, are excellent and make this worth buying as opposed to this streaming. It. And finally, I believe this is the last movie. We made it to the end. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. This is spy number 1133. This is Bong Joon-ho's Okja on 4K. And this is one of the best 4K pictures I have ever seen in my life. Uh, and uh, definitely worth spending 25 bucks on another streamer. A lot of streamers here at the end. I know Cartoon has been, been getting into that, and I, I like to personally own those things, so it's cool to have this with all the special features on it and everything. But the picture quality here, cannot recommend it enough. It's, it's superb, unbelievable. Um, when I first watched this movie, I actually was like tweeting and campaigning letter or uh, Criterion to, to put this out um, as part of their collection just because... Uh, I knew they were doing Bong Joon-ho movies, and I really wanted this to be a part, even though a lot of people consider it to be lower tier Bong Joon-ho. I do not think it's wonderful. And uh, so yeah, Okja, we should check it out. All right. Now that is everything, my friends. Thank you for sticking around this long, for watching all the way through. Um, that is all of my criterions uh, in one video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope this new year's off to a great start for you. Be on the lookout for, uh, for some more videos soon, uh, similar to this one, uh, with complete collections and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Looking at me now. Yeah. See, I got my life back. God took control and I call that a life hack.